Hey, what's up? My name is Tyson Brown and I want to welcome you to Tyson's Fitness Test Podcast. This is Australia's top health and fitness podcast to help you lose weight, look good with your shirt off, feel confident in your body and finally achieve the goals you want with your health and fitness. So five days a week, I'm going to be giving you top information from myself and also from leading experts in the field so you know everything you need to do to get in the best shape of your life. From nutrition to mindset to workout, everything is covered in this podcast and you need to go nowhere else. So like I said, it's going to be five days a week, Monday to Friday, in your ears with quick actionable segments that you can implement straight away because the most important thing is you can put these things into play. Also, if you listen all the way to the end of the episode, you're going to get two special gifts that you can download upon listening to it. So make sure you listen all the way to the end to get those free gifts, okay? So let's get into the episode. Is there an optimal diet for fat loss? Is there a diet that's more superior than any other to help you lose fat? That is the question that I got asked in Instagram actually, in Instagram DM. I said, hey, I've been seeing all these diets out there. They all seem to work, but which one's the best? Which one's gonna give me the fastest results? I was like, hmm, that's actually a pretty good question. Because, and I'm actually, it's funny, because I'm actually writing a blog post about this at the moment. Because when you look at it, right? If you look at everyone on the keto fat at the moment, you look on Instagram, people have actually got keto in their name, you know, keto Kevin, whatever it is. These people are losing a lot of weight. Whoever's on the keto diet, they're, they're you know, showing their progress, they're losing fat fast. Most of these people are really obese, they have a lot of weight to lose, but they're losing weight, right? They've jumped on this bandwagon and it's going off quickly. And that's great, you see these people getting really quick results. Then, before that, you see people on the Atkins diet. And the people who are on Atkins diet are also losing weight pretty quickly. And it's interesting because they cut out their carbs, they eat more protein, but they're still able to lose weight. And it's like, oh, okay, that's cool. And then there's the, I don't know if you've heard of it, it's called If It Fits Your Macros crowd. And If It Fits Your Macros basically is that you track everything you eat, and as long as you're in a calorie deficit, you will lose weight. I'm a big proponent of this because there are certain foods that I love to have in my diet. For example, bagels. If I have bagels in my diet, I know that as long as I'm in my calorie deficit, I'm going to lose weight. And so, when you look at all these diets out there, and you see everyone getting results on these diets, and you're like, oh, that's weird. Which one's the best though? And the funny thing is, there is no one best diet for fat loss, okay? We're looking, we're trying to look at, you know, like uh, there's fat loss and there's optimal health. Optimal health, there seems to be a fair few commonalities. Obviously lots of vegetables, um, having some sort of like protein in there. And a lot of the other things, there are actually a lot of other lifestyle factors for the most part, because when you look at the blue zones who are quote unquote optimal health, when you look at the blue zones, those blue zones are people who, they do eat carbs, they do eat meat, they don't drink a lot, although they drink a little bit. They do eat they do eat different variations of foods depending on where the people in the blue zones are. And that's for optimal health, right? But we're talking about fat loss. And so when you look at fat loss, you're like, hey, what's the best diet for fat loss? The best diet for fat loss is gonna be the diet that you can stick to, okay? Because the reason people are getting results on keto is because it's very easy for them to say, I'm going to cut out carbohydrates. And they just know, if it's got carbohydrates, I can't have it. It Yes, it does cut out an essential nutrient, not an essential nutrient, it cuts out macronutrients, it cuts out fruits for a predominant amount of time you have strawberries. It cuts out a lot of things though, right? So that's why I'm not a big advocate of keto because like, it's such a restriction, but it works for a lot of people because they like that restriction because it stops us from eating cakes and lollies and pastries and all those type of things. Things that I bloody love, but it helps keep them on track. Same with the people with the Atkin diet. Now people, if it's your macros, my camp is that if you wanna have a bagel and you put the bagel, so if it's your macros are more, I would say more for the people who like to track 
things, who like to look at numbers, who like to, you know, monitor stuff because you can track in real time how many calories you're eating, how much protein, how much carbs, how much fat you're eating, and then you can adjust accordingly based on any food. So if you're someone who loves bagels, or if you're someone who loves ice cream, and you can just put that into your, into your My Fitness Pal, and you're gonna be okay, then that's great. Because you can have that, you can track it, you know your numbers are gonna be okay, and you're not gonna be freaking out about it. You're not gonna be stressing out about, oh my God, you know, I ate a carbohydrate, I'm gonna gain all this fat. Cause you're like, no, that's not gonna happen. I track my food, it's all okay. That's why some of my clients work really well with it, but some don't because they hate the tracking aspect. And that's why it doesn't work for them. And so in saying that, you've got to think about which diet are you going to be able to adhere to for when you do the, like when you're trying to lose fat. If you want to lose fat really, really quickly, or you want to be consistent with your fat loss depending on how much weight you've got to lose, you've got to say, okay, what's going to be the best thing for me to adhere to in the long run? Because if you go keto, but you go keto Monday to Friday, and every Saturday night, you end up going out, eating a shitload of food, binging, drinking alcohol, you are fucking yourself up. Just so you know. Okay, like you are really, and like if you keep doing that, clearly you can't adhere to the keto diet and you shouldn't be doing that. And that's cool. Now you know that you shouldn't be doing that diet. So you gotta try something different. If you're someone who tries the calorie count, the if it fits your macros, the one that I teach, and you hate tracking what you eat every single day, and it sends you fucking mad, but you would rather just say, you know what? I'm not gonna eat any carbohydrates. And you can stay on keto, then do it, okay? Because it's all on personal preference. As much as I hate keto, as much as I'm against it, because it does only give you short-term results and you can't be on keto for the rest of your life, if it's enough for you to lose a bunch of weight, then go low carbs eventually, then slowly start adding in carbs, but, it's, but you're keeping the weight off, then awesome, you've done it. But for the majority of people, that's not the case. For the majority of the people, they do what I say. They last a week, maybe they last three weeks, then all of a sudden, they fucking binge, and they put it all back on. And you don't want that. So you need to ask yourself that question, what is the most likely thing for you to be able to adhere to. I'm just being quiet because I want you to think, you know, like, keto sounds great, but is it, do you really want to cut out a macronutrient group? If a fish macro sounds awesome, but you're gonna have ice cream, lollies, whatever you want, but can you stick to tracking your food consistently and weighing it and measuring it and things like that? Because it does take a little bit more effort. And if you can, awesome, you found out what works for you. And when you start to play that game, you're like, okay, now that I know that all diets work, but it's whatever works for me, then you can start customizing things, right? So you might be someone who works really well with keto, but you also need to be following intermittent fasting. So you need to go longer periods of time without food while doing keto to maintain your calorie deficit. Or for me, you might follow it for your macros, but you've also got to follow intermittent fasting because if you eat breakfast, it's very hard to stay in a calorie deficit. Or just because you don't like breakfast. Because there's so many little things out there and you can eventually put your own little quote unquote diet together that's gonna be the easiest for you to stick to and to give you the best results. So for me personally, what I like to do, if it fits your macros, I like to track my calories. And then what I like to do is I like to use intermittent fasting and usually it's about 16 to 18 hours depending on how I go before I eat and that's just me that's just how it goes for me I like I hate breakfast if I can stay for longer periods of time without food it makes it easier for me to adhere to and then I like to have things like bagels and stuff like that you know I have bagels and there's a high protein cottage cheese there's just certain things I can have because I like it and it's easy for me to sustain but for you, it might be completely different. You might be someone who needs to have breakfast and who needs to track calories or whatever it's gonna be. So 
don't think there's one optimal diet for fat loss because there definitely isn't. Everyone is different. I know you've heard it before, and you probably get fucking sick of people saying it too. Everyone's different, but it's true. You've got to find out what's going to be the most successful thing for you that you can stick to for you to be able to lose the weight. And you can change the diet after you lose weight and figure out how to like maintain that weight loss. But at the start, it's going to be a hard effort as so you've got to figure out, okay, based on you and your goals and where you are and your lifestyle and your activity and all those other things, at this current moment, if you were to do this, what's the easiest way you could adhere to a diet? Once you think about that, you pick the diet, you follow it, you don't change from it unless it doesn't work, and you just ride it all the way through till you lose the fat. The grass isn't always green on the other side, you've got to stick to what you want to do. So I hope that was a bit of insight, I hope that helped you out, I hope that gave you something to think about. Find a diet that's going to suit you and stick to it. Alright, I'll speak to you next time. Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast. I really appreciate it. So now you've listened all the way to the end. That means you get some free goodies. So what you can do is you've got two different options or you can take them both. I've got an intermittent fasting cheat sheet and a high protein 20 recipe meal guide designed specifically for you in your situation. These meal plans and this intermittent fasting guide is designed to help you burn stubborn belly fat and get in the best shape of your life. So all you have to do is go to the show notes, click on the download link, and they'll get sent straight to your email address. It's as simple as that. They're completely free. They're going to help you transform your body. So go to the show notes now and download your free guides, and I'll speak to you in the next episode.